What's up, Browns fans? Welcome to the Dogs Podcast. Let's kick this thing off. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Zach Kopp, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to another live episode of the Dogs. No intro today, changing things up a little bit. Uh, I'm Blake Reniker. That's Justin Charles, Zach Cop, and Josh All. Since we don't have the intro, uh, welcome to the show. Remember to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Please uh, head on over to YouTube, check out our page, and subscribe. Um, our YouTube page is picking up in popularity a little bit, so you don't want to be missing out on that trend. Uh, we were served a slice of humble pie this week. We're still sitting at four and two. Um, we ate the whole pie. Yeah, we got a lot we of season like ahead of us. In our face, you know. Agreed. Um, so we're just going to dive right into this game because I think we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, you know, normally we do what went right, what went wrong. And when I was trying to think of, you know, the outline for today, I was like, the only thing that went right, there wasn't really anything that we didn't wreck the bus. on. Yeah. We got to Pittsburgh (laughs) Yeah, and we made it home. Okay. So I was like, well, let's just talk about the game. You know, I feel like there's some things we need to discuss. Um, so no, not much went right. A lot went wrong. So let's just dive into it. Uh, the first thing I got here is, you know, I put – we've seen a lot of things in the national media and myself kind of bashing Baker. And I just want to start by saying by no means am I putting this all on Baker. Am I panicking for the season? Am I saying bench Baker? No. Uh, you know, it's a prove-it year for Baker, not a prove-it six games for Baker. Um, So where do we stand with him? I know my opinion – uh, I know some of your guys' opinions. What do you guys think? So for you, yeah. for you listeners out there uh, that are tuning in, you didn't see how hot this uh, this room <laughs> got before we went on air. Um, a lot of different opinions. Do I think Baker played great? No. no. Do I think he put us in a position to win the game? No. no. Um, I don't think that it was all on him. Uh, whether it was we were missing Teller or not, our offensive line was just garbage. Um from really the first time they went on the field until the end, just we weren't we didn't do anything that we saw we had success with. And credit the Steelers and their game plan; they do this to us every year yeah. uh, when we think that we're going to be in a game. They do this not just to the Browns; they do it to almost every team they play. They have one of the best coaches and one of the best defenses in the Absolutely. game. Uh, so Steelers fans that want to get rid of Mike Tomlin, he's just you guys are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's not a team that you come in. I don't know if I've ever really watched a game that the Steelers have played, whether it's against Cleveland or another team where I'm like, man, they just weren't prepared today. And I feel like that's where I that's where I think we went into that game and Stefanski, um, and, and, you know, I don't think that he went in. I think he went in with a game plan, and when it went out the window, he was like, I don't know what I do I, to against, touch, this, yeah. against this defense. And, and credit, it's his first game as a head coach to have to make that type of stuff on the fly when your quarterback isn't playing great. Yep. That to to go on your point, what we've done well is we've ran the ball really successfully and then taken opportunities downfield. Well, it turns out their front seven is very very legit. If we and we knew that going in, probably the best defense in the league. I, that's just my opinion. That's they literally got killers everywhere and they sent them all day on us. We couldn't run the ball with Hunt. Um, and then, like you said, I don't, I don't think they ever made an adjustment to try to do anything. And then when Baker did drop back, he got blown up. And now, me and Blake have been talking for three days. <laughs> it's a joke, but we've been literally arguing. There's probably been thousands of text messages <laughs> sent back and right. forth, just you know. But and credit to what you know, he didn't look good. He didn't put us in a position. And it's a typical Cleveland Browns game where all the hype comes up, everything gets excited. Browns fans are hungry. Everybody's ready. And then I've seen this game before. I And it hurts. It hurts really bad because then guess what? Facebook is just all these Steeler fans just. <laughs> right. <laughs> Armchair quarterbacks, you know, everybody watching the game. And, yeah, Baker, the pick six Terrible. Uh, to start the game. I don't. I, There's I where Stefanski had to throw his game plan out the window because you're down 10 nothing in the first five right, minutes but of the game. part of, I mean, Blake, you mentioned it last week. Shouldn't have part of the game plan been, hey, you see where Minka Fitzpatrick is? Let's not throw it to him. I guarantee you Stefanski said, hey, Baker, <laughs> don't throw an interception this week. 
And well, obviously, I, I guarantee but, you the game plan wasn't to attack Minka Fitzpatrick. <laughs> I <laughs> Prove, go after him, go after <laughs> yeah. him real hard. Uh, like, I mean, come on, that we've part, seen this from Baker over and over and every so all the time. The the first, the pick six was bad, but it was the honestly for me the second interception is what drove me nuts because it's because his decision making. It, 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 instead of just throw the ball away or whatever, it was throw the ball up and try to make some sort of play, and it's like. There were three, like three defenders over yep. there. It was bad. A, a good quarterback, a smart quarterback, someone who has developed and understands the game is going to get rid of that ball. I mean, I know as bad as, I, and I'm not saying put Keenum in because Thank Keenum God. didn't look great either. Don't but at say least that. I did see a, a very good veteran move from Keenum, Keenum early on when he was in there. Is he was getting pressure? He's about to get hit. He threw the ball right at somebody's feet, like the back of the running back. They just chucked it right to the ground. I'm like now, that's a Tom Brady play. I wouldn't say Tom Brady play. That's no, a I've, very Case Keenum play. I've seen Brady do that before where the play shot, get rid of the ball, don't I know take a sack, saying, don't throw yeah, a pick. I know Live to see another down. So yeah. if, so yep. the second pick um, that, you know, Baker was scrambling once again for his, his life. life on the 47% of his dropbacks that he had to run because T.J. Watt, and it didn't matter who it was. Anybody that was on the line, it was a cornerback, a safety, a linebacker, a DN. It felt like, they were in the backfield by the time if we were in shotgun, it was Baker was just catching the ball and somebody was in his face. Uh, and Blake, I know that you you know talking before we should have mixed up the snap count and that's on Baker. Yep. That's on you know I think that falls too on your coaching staff too that you have to you yep. have to make sure that that's an emphasis. If I'm a coach, I'm making sure those things are happening, not just putting that solely on my quarterback. This Is dude's it, a professional quarterback. Yeah, but you're also in charge of your team. The coaches don't call snap. This isn't pee wee football. You think you think the coach tells Aaron Rodgers use it, go on two don't this compare, time? No, don't compare. Don't compare Baker jumped. to Aaron Rodgers. I'm comparing him to just competent NFL quarterbacks. I'm saying that if I noticed something was going wrong, I would make a change. And I felt like we didn't make any changes. We're playing with one hand behind our back when your quarterback can't do anything. We we have a crutch. We have one style that we can win games with. One style. We have to be able to run for six yards of carry. We have to. Minnesota didn't run play action boot at 100% of the time when Stefanski's there. It's like 40 to 50%. The other 50 to 60% of the time, your quarterback has to play from the pocket. Our quarterback cannot play from the pocket. I don't think at I'm least not to this point that. in his career, I'm not he saying cannot that. play from the pocket. I, I, he didn't play for, he couldn't play from the pocket on Sunday. I'm not that, saying yeah, that that's, his whole career is defined on one game. That's just not the way I choose it's to look at things. It's not one game, but he threw twenty some interceptions last year. <laughs> He's thrown other interceptions this year. For our fans out there, Blake's, Blake's uh, hard headed when it comes to his argument. He has no gift. For, for our fans out there, I got to throw this in real quick. They can't hear us apparently. Oh, great. <laughs> so I'm going to cut Good this thing. live feed real quick, and then we're we'll going to restart in. in about a minute. Hey, uh, thanks for coming back. We're <laughs> live again. Uh, <laughs> apologize for the technical difficulties. You know, we're our own producers, our own showrunners. We're our own tech team. You know, so, you know, sometimes <laughs> you're going to run into stuff like this. Yeah, and the live, doing stuff live, this, this is what you can run into. Yeah, yeah, you know, but. We're not perfect. No. Neither is Baker. <laughs> <laughs> We're Which better at our job. We were, we're better at our job than he is at his job right now. Uh, so the, you know, obviously, you guys couldn't hear us. Maybe okay, they got are, us now. They can hear us. Maybe you guys right. are good lip readers. Uh, but we were talking about, <laughs> um, you know, how the game went, wh- wh- what we thought of Baker. Where do we think we stand with him? Is he the guy going forward? You know, you guys didn't hear me say this, but I'm saying by no means do I say bench Baker this year. I'm not calling for Keenum. I'm not. You know, I'm not panicking on the season. We're four and two. I still think the Browns. I still see six wins on the schedule for the Browns. We're still probably going to make the playoffs, barring a monumental collapse. Um, my thought is, is if this is what we get from Baker, and I'm not talking about just this game. I'm talking about the season in general. If this is the way, as good as he can play next year, he's not going to be our quarterback. So to touch, we kind of we talked about that too. To sit to go against, you know, what Blake was saying. Literally, the two games where we've not looked like we belonged out there, we've won against two super high-caliber defenses. One in Pittsburgh, who leads the league in sacks now. Yes, yeah, they're basically Bowl, Super Bowl-caliber teams. Yeah, yeah. five Basically, five sacks a game. Not only do they have a crazy front seven that they literally just teed off on Baker, just sent the house, everything. 
But Baltimore is right there too. Baltimore is the same thing, four sacks basically a game. And there, there's guys in the secondary, they're just standing there waiting because Baker has, we kind of talked about it, but our O-line looked terrible. Yeah. Literally so, as soon as the ball was snapped. Yeah, so I definitely, I mean, did Baker, we, we did Baker play well enough to, for us to win this game? Obviously no. Um, first drive, throwing the pick six, big play. Um, yep. And then the rest of the game was kind of, I mean, it was our game was defined. One, you can't turn the ball over, not against a team that's good, especially when you're not getting the turnovers back like we've been getting. Um, so credit the Steelers for that. Their game plan, way better than ours. Their game plan said, hey, we're going to beat you up front on both sides, and they did. They ran the ball well yeah. uh, for over 100. James Conner looked like James Conner of a couple years ago. Looked good. Um, and we didn't run the ball successfully, and they were. They packed the box. They did exactly what, you know, I think it was Josh brought it up a couple times of one team's going to say, we're going to pack the, we're not going to let you run for 250 yards on us today. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to stop the run. Well, yeah. And, and a lot of, I don't want, I don't know how much, a lot of a little bit, I got to put some of this on Stefanski because, yeah. okay. There were times at the beginning of the game, first quarter when I'm sitting there watching the game, I'm going, put Keenum in. And it's not because oh. of how bad Baker was playing. It's because I, I kept seeing Baker shaking his arm. Yeah. Yeah. He was, it was hanging. He was getting up slow. He had that look on his face like, this dude is hurt. Get him out of the game. He's not going to win the game for you because he can't play. Makes him more scared to get hit because he knows the next hit might be the last one. You know, mm-hmm. he's making these decisions. And I'm watching him like, as a head coach, you got to know. You knew going into this game, Baker's hurt. And he's not and the type of guy that's going to say, coach, got to pull me. Absolutely he's not. not he's going to, he'll play if he's got one leg. I mean, yep. that's the kind of guy, you're right, that's, that he is. So I think Stefanski at some point needed to go over there and say, you're hurt. I'm sorry, kid, you're hurt. Right. Just just sit this one out. I'm, I'm My call. Yeah, no, and I agree. You know? I, and he took a bunch of hits. Oh, uh, they, every time he got hit, I cringe. I'm like, oh, my gosh, is he getting up? Yeah, there was there was a few hits where I didn't early on that I was like, oh, they were good. Keenum, start getting loose. Yeah. Take some snaps over on the sideline because, I mean, their defense, it was like they knew the play call or they knew the snap yep. count. They knew everything. Even on a couple of the plays where we got offsides, I mean, it was close that it wasn't offsides. T.J. Yep. Watt, uh, and he does this every week. It's not like T.J. Watt broke out and was For a star. Cleveland, yeah. You know, again, in right. this game. It's, this, it it's something that he's really good at, and he's also one of the most penalized when it comes to jumping offsides. But – we didn't make any adjustments, and I we kind of talked about it when we weren't, you know, live people or couldn't people couldn't hear us. <laughs> um, that goes on Baker. I think it also goes on Stefanski as well. And I think that that has to, as a coach, you have to see those adjustments. You see Baker's hurt, you got to make a change. You see that hey, they're really killing us up front. We got to make a change. And it felt like they killed it was the same game plan the entire game yeah no adjust, no halftime adjustment no any adjustment. well and we weren't really out of the game for in the first half okay so we defense held strong Our defense it looked, played well it looked yeah. like they're it looked like pittsburgh i'm like i'm thinking i'm watching that first drive they're going right down the field and getting a touchdown i'm like this could get i was literally thought this could get bad early held them to a field goal i'm like all right offense comes out pick six on the third play not great down 10 nothing <laughs> get the ball back I, don't, I think we went three and out or something. We didn't move the ball in the next drive. Defense held. We finally get moving the ball down 10 nothing, and we're going to go for it. I think it was like fourth and four on like their 38, too long to kick a field goal when Cody Parkey's your kicker, um, that you can't trust him from distance at Heinz Field, and we get a false start. And I was just like, man, right when we started like doing something right and like, hey, we get a field goal here, we're only down a touchdown, now we're stuck to punt. They go. They we punt it. They go down. Touchdown. We're down seventeen nothing. Totally different field of the game, and I felt like then you felt like you couldn't run the ball at all after yeah, that. No. So I will say, I don't think the Browns have been very good coming out of the half this year in any of our games. No. Nope. Part of that to me, and you're gonna you're gonna freak out is oh god, what kind of adjustments can Stefanski really make at halftime? Because there's only one way we can play on offense. So what's he supposed to adjust? Because if if he could, if he the other team's going to adjust to what we're doing in the first half, we can't adjust off that because we literally that's the only way we can play to be successful. So how what are we supposed to adjust to? So 
to argue that too, how many of our wins are situational football where we're just playing to get out of there? Dallas, we're up big, trying to run the clock out. Same thing with Washington. We're just trying to, I mean, obviously things got really ugly towards the end, but Indy, even an Indy team, we were up. We, our offense becomes completely stagnant. I mean, he threw two picks in the second half against Indy. Well, one. One, and, yeah, one, one does it. One, I mean, still, yeah. Okay, still one. That he got hurt on. Yeah. Still one. An, I, that was awful. That's another thing about Baker. Last year, he had some tip passes. You know, of his 21 picks, you know, probably like three or four of them were off the hands of people. His picks are just bad, though. They're, they're oh. just the bad, bad decisions. Yeah, his two picks this week were atrocious. I'm not going to stand up for Baker and say, oh, I don't know. I, Baker, yeah. you know, he made a mistake. That guy came out of nowhere. No. Manko was standing just, right there. Just, yeah. and it was the down. easiest pick one, he'll ever The get second one, throwing off one Baker, um, if you're listening, you're not strong enough to throw off your back foot like a Patrick Mahomes <laughs> um, type. And he does, and most of his picks, if you look at his, it's like a footwork thing of he's like scrambling out, throwing off his back foot. And it almost felt like, to me, that throw where he just threw it up and it was picked off yeah. at like midfield. They picked this off yep. at midfield. Almost like desperation time. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to throw this up and hope we catch it type of a feeling. And the score, I think, was that in the first half? Yeah. I, I, I can't think remember. So. And it, like, I it had that feel of, oh, we're just throwing it up and saying a prayer that we catch his ball in the first half of a game. And right. offensively, I think that. Baker, one, felt a lot of pressure from what he was dealing with on the field, and two, I think himself felt, hey, I really got to try to win this game, and I can't win this game with what I'm dealing with on the field. I can't with what's happening every time that I snap the ball. Well, you saw the frustration, too. Like, for a guy that I, I'll be the first to say, OBJ, I beat up on the guy a lot. Yeah. He calls everybody over, rah, rah, let's go out there, let's, you know, let's drive down the field, let's come back, and that was when things were still reasonable. And we just never... Well, and we didn't do a whole lot of things, I felt like, to get an OBJ involved, like, in your game plan. Yeah. Like, yeah. I saw... With a lot of teams that you see, a lot of really good teams in the NFL, if they can't get the ball to their wide receiver, they manufacture a way to try to get yes. the ball to their best yeah. player. We've said that. Yeah. Like you said on numerous occasions, that Odell is, you know, awesome with the ball in his hands. You just yep. got to get him the ball in his hands. Well, sometimes you have to manufacture those touches. It's not always going to be... Well, Odell, you know Odell's going to get open on this post route or the seven route, and you're going to be able to give him the Mm -hmm. ball. You have to run a slow crosser route just to get him involved to make the defense not be one-dimensional, which I felt the Steelers were the entire game. I think he had two catches for 25 yards, and one of the— Kills my fantasy. His second catch was with, like, 10 seconds left in the third quarter. It was a Case Keenum, like, 12-yard throw. Yeah, a little dump off. Yeah. I think, Zach, where you were saying earlier about, you know, this was Stefanski's first— game was that you that said that yeah you yeah. know as because he's a rookie head coach i mean he's going yeah. into pittsburgh and honestly i mean no one's beaten them yet no so it's not like you can go study someone else's tape and say well how'd they do it right you know no one's really exploited their weaknesses yet so we'll see what the first team that beats pittsburgh how they do it yeah someone's going to beat them i mean it's very hard we got to a go good, undefeated uh, we got a really good matchup in a couple weeks here that the Steelers kind of got screwed on. They got to play Baltimore here in a couple weeks. That'll be an interesting game because yep. both teams that came out made us look like we don't belong in the field with them. And yep. you got a bunch of haters out there, and you got Ravens fans, Steelers fans saying, you know that we don't, that that's the case. We don't. We're they're up here, and we're way down here. Even though our record, you know, shows that we're only a game or two out of first place. Um, right. Well, and for all the panicking Browns fans, remember the Chiefs made the Ravens look like they didn't belong. Yes. On the field. And last year, we played the Ravens in a game where we, we made them look like they didn't belong with us. Yeah. So, this is the NFL. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I'm now, I'm going to say this comment. I'm not going to, don't, you know, bash on me. I won't. But I there's, might. there's been a couple games in teams' careers, like a Tom Brady, where he came out and his team, they wrote him off. I think it was the Chiefs a couple years ago. They trounced him like 40, I think it might have been Kareem Hunt's rookie year. They came out and they... Killed him in the first game of the year, or second game, early in the year, and it was like 42 to 10 or something. Everybody's like, oh, this is a year of Patriots finally down. And they seem to be okay. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> my my thing, back to the big, I just don't see the progress. I've seen complete regression. Now, that I, I and, can get in line with you on that. And, That's what's disappointing. And I'm not like, I'm a big Dan Orlowski fan. Mm-hmm. And he put a bunch of stuff out. There. He's like, if yep. Baker's first read isn't open, 
You're panic. It's yeah. done. He's yep. done. I mean, I know this is a new system, but this guy should be able to read defenses. I mean, cover two is cover two. It doesn't matter what your offense is. Man coverage is man coverage. It doesn't matter what your offensive system is. The fact, and I think he's just as bad pre-snap. He doesn't see blitzes coming. He doesn't change his snap count. Like we talked before the show, I don't know if I've ever seen Baker audible. I've never seen him audible. I can't, I can't, I can't yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never <laughs> to seen be him honest, it, yep. we'll be watching this week. Yeah. Every time yeah. the audibles, we'll be like, hey, just call <laughs> yeah, audible. Take a shot I'll every be, time the audibles. Right. Well, I'll be uh, on my way to Cancun, so let me have it. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah congratulations. For our, yeah, yeah. For our fans out there that don't know, Blake uh, ties the knot. He's going to be off the market. Yeah. Technically, yeah. he's already off the market. I guess well, I, say, <laughs> for, re- for real, for yeah. real. Now, I mean, she still does have a few days to get her act together and yeah. figure things out. Right. Yes. Yeah. Which, no. I mean, no, I come, talk, come talk to us, Keith. If, yeah. if she hasn't by now, you are as good as married. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, like, I'll, I'll be watching on TV, and I'm like, oh, this, this safety's blitzing. And then he just runs into it. Like, man, if I can see that from TV, this guy should be able to see that pre-snap. We say that all – I feel like we say that a lot, though, about different s- scenarios in the game. And it's not just with the Browns that we're able to see those things, and it's like, It's man. obviously different uh, right. when you're on the field. You right. know, I'm seeing but it from I, above. Right, but I'm just – I agree. I agree that Baker's got to pick up on those things. The, and I love, I love everything about – I love that he's, like, bought into being a Cleveland Brown. He seems like he genuinely likes Cleveland. I don't know if it's because he likes Cleveland or because he knows if it doesn't work here, he's probably not getting a job somewhere else. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, you know, I think he's funny. I like his attitude. I, I like all that you stuff. You like his commercials? Yes. <laughs> I some do of, some of them are pretty early. <laughs> I do think they're very funny. The yes. Hulu sports one is, yeah. yeah. No, 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 the progressive ones are the, good. The, yeah. the book club one is solid. Uh, you know, there's there's good ones out there. But I just don't ones. like the way he plays. And yeah. and I'm not seeing any progress. And that's my thing. I'm not saying to bail on him. Like I said, when we didn't have audio. This is a prove it year, not a prove it six games. And I'm not saying bail on him. I still think, but even if we win 10 games and make the playoffs this year, if you do that, it's going to be in spite of Baker, not because of Baker. And I know I'm going to throw – the Broncos literally won a playoff game with a quarterback and then got rid of him. Sometimes you got to be able to make tough decisions like that to take your team to the next level. The Broncos with Tebow probably could have just kept making the playoffs and then losing. But they had to make a tough de- – obviously it's easier when you got – you're like, I can bring in Peyton Manning. But Well, right. and, and even like the Seahawks, which is I always think is an interesting situation where they – they paid, what was it, Matt Flynn? Yeah. All yeah. that money to come in and be the quarterback, and then they just drafted some scrub named Russell Wilson in the third yeah, round or short, fourth round or whatever. Yeah, too short, play, can't play. Small hands. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And see what's history. Going on there. Even yeah. to a lesser extent, the, the Bears with Trubisky, we gave them tons of crap for, like, sticking with him for so long, even though it was obvious he wasn't the guy. And, you know, I don't even think Nick Foles is that good. And they make the switch. They're 5-1. and one. Right. Well, uh, just stick up for Trubisky a little bit. He won a couple of those games. He's won a couple of those games, and he was only a Pro Bowler and has you know, a winning the record way, as a the quarterback. Way they, yeah. The way they pulled him, I was like, they were they just couldn't wait anymore. They're no, like, and that's the right. thing. And Trubisky had shown them a Pro Bowl season right? and no, winning I, lots of games, and they still well, had okay. to go and pull now, it. Now, that I can, I can agree with you on. He showed no um, progression. He wasn't getting better. And, I mean, it was just the bad decisions, the constant interceptions, or almost interceptions. So I mean, everything we say about our quarterback. I, that's what I'm hearing. We're looking at it through, you know, Browns fan glossy glasses with Baker. But if you just put his numbers up without his pitcher, you would think that was a career backup quarterback. I'm not saying that Baker's the guy. I'm not saying he's our quarterback for the next decade. I don't want to. You know, confuse that. I don't. I'm not saying that. I'm. I, I agree that he still has to prove that he is that. Yeah. I'm not for benching him now. You know, for no, what I, we I have. I completely there. agree. I do. Um, not think you bench him for Keenum because we. I think we know what Keenum is. I yeah. think that Baker can still be. I don't think I'm not ruling out that Baker can't be a franchise quarterback. He looked awesome last week in the first half against Indy. Okay, and yeah, we changed our game plan in the second half. Didn't run as many pass plays. He didn't look great in the second half. I, I agree. Through the two picks, second one he got killed on. Uh, that I think he's way more banged up than what he Absolutely. leads. That's what on. I was going to. Because since that hit, mm-hmm. if you've looked at his numbers, just since that play where he threw that second, it's bad. You've got to be able to throw the ball to be able to be successful, and I don't think that he can okay. throw it at 100%. So what's, here, what's his injury? 
Right? Is ribs, it ribs? Right ribs. Okay, so I was listening to a podcast. They've got like a doctor who does like pro football like evaluation. Like he watches and sees kind of what the injuries are for guys. And he would they were talking about Baker Mayfield and he said, Yeah, they have him listed as ribs. They said he said, I don't think it's ribs. He said, I think what is it, AC joint, I think, yeah, in the shoulder. In he shoulder. said he said, Did you see how his arm was hanging? He said, That's not ribs. Yeah, but so I've separated my AC joint and my shoulder. If it had a separate AC joint, he wouldn't. I'm not for saying all. separate, but I'm saying something. It's something. Is, his arms not like as bad as his ribs are. His arms not 100 percent either. Yeah. Because yeah, in that game, I mean, it looked like his arm was dead in I mean, the Colts was, game. He could barely yeah. walk off the field and lift. They said that he couldn't lift his arm up. I mean, that looked. It looked like a broken collarbone to me. The way he was holding the arm down like that. Right. Like, and then you mentioned in the Steelers game. I mean, he took some shots. shots. Yep. Um, I mean, he got hit, I think it was eight times is what they said he was hit. Um, I think they had four sacks, if they I'm had four correct. Sacks. Yep, four yep. sacks. Um, yep. But he was hit a lot, and you could see him shaking that arm off of just, like, trying to get the blood flow into it again type of a thing. And against a, that might work this week against the Cincinnati Bengals team. That might work, not being at 100%. But against a Steelers team, you got to be a hundred. You got to be ready to go. You got to you got to play a perfect game to yeah. beat a really good team. That's why yeah. I was like, I I just wish they would have. So fancy just would have benched him and said, "We're going to play with Keenum because you're hurt, not because you're bad, because you're hurt." So and we me, can't because now he's going. If if you increase that injury, you just prolong <clears throat> it throughout the season, and then we have more games like this. Let me pose yeah. this to you though: Is this in Baker's head and a little bit in Stefanski's head where Baker's like, if if I get benched because I'm hurt? I might not get back. Not if it's done. Not if it's done correctly. I think because I think if, you, if, he, I, if he gets a, if he gets benched, and he start, and I'm not saying case scheme's good. Hypothetically speaking, they start winning games. They start and winning the offense, and the yelling. offense looks good, and he's not turning the ball. I, Next thing you know, there's a QB well, controversy. That's where in the, Cleveland, the which trust is between what head we coach don't want. and quarterback comes into play. And if Stefanski, they have that relationship where he can take him aside and in his office and say, "Listen, this is what we're doing," and whenever you're back to health. You're the guy. You like can, you're the yeah, guy. But you and can say that. I know. But if you're winning games, you're not going to. But pull Baker it. was winning games, though. Yeah. Right. We're and four I agree. one. Four going into this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. But if if Baker comes out due to injury and Keenum and there's a spark, we've been saying you know teams got to stop. We haven't been hitting those over the top passes. You know, teams stack the box to stop the run, and then our offense just becomes stagnant. It's not like teams are stacking the box to stop the run. And then we start hitting bombs over the top. Baker's averaging like 160 yards passing. That's not that's not Keenum's game either, though. No, I, but so what I'm saying is, it's in Stefanski's mind. It's in Baker's mind. They both in Baker's not going to have that trust with Stefanski. Stefanski didn't draft Baker. Andrew Barry didn't no, draft I, Baker. There's no there's no connection there. I think there's something really important that happened too after the game. If you watch the press conference, Stefanski came out and said, "Listen, if Baker is 100 percent healthy." He will be going Sunday. He is our quarterback. Well, Anthony Lynn said the same thing about Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that's Dude, true. That's so true. That is true. But, but, I don't but think Justin that's Herbert's a little yeah. more talented than then, yeah. Case Keenum. I guess that's but, a different story because Herbert was the future no matter what. No matter what. Right. So Tyrod wasn't brought there. Keenum's wasn't not signed. the future, so it's not the same. Tyrod was signed there to be the backup to Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Yep. And then they drafted a rookie that they saw, hey, how many times is a rookie quarterback that starts out pan out in the NFL more times they fail yeah. um and I and then they had the whole doctor puncturing the lung thing so Anthony Lynn's got to say oh it, when Tyrod's back he'll be a no um <laughs> so I get what Blake's saying about the whole man I really don't want to give up my spot because it might not be there I like that Stefanski Stefanski came out and said if Baker's healthy he's our starting quarterback this year and just and kind of and ended it. the conversation because yeah. how many times do you see where you're like, well, we're going to see how this week goes and we're going to make our decision, you know, before Sunday. See, I don't want wishy wa- in I agree. And like I said, you can't make a decision on Baker going into next year if you pull him after six games. So it's, right, because then hard, you don't know. Exactly. As hard as I am on Baker today, it's still his team this season. It, no yeah. matter what happens, unless his arm falls off, he better start all 16, hopefully 17 games. Because at the end of this year, I want to know if he's the guy or we're moving on. Because I'm tired of the guessing game. I, and another thing, too, is how many times is the coach in hot water already and the quarterback struggling and the next guy? How many times as panicky, awful Browns fans do we force that hand? 
No, oh, I, a lot. And the media time. does too. And yes. Cleveland media. They, you know, there's always got to be somebody to blame. I think Stefanski did a pretty good job of taking some of the blame on himself. Um, uh, he was, you know, reported out there saying, and I agree with him, that he said, uh, there's plays I ran on Sunday that I would never run again. I learned my lesson the hard way. Because I, no. I think that there were a lot of plays that we ran where it just felt like there was no burst. There was nothing on It was, we're going to probably run the ball on first down. We're going to do a play-action pass on the next down. It was the, yep. it was the same play calling. Stagnant. Every there was nothing to do out of the norm, uh, yeah. like getting Odell involved, getting a Jarvis involved early. Yeah, I'm drawing comparisons in my head to Freddie last year, and I feel like if there he ran like five <laughs> plays, he's like, no, 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 no. I, I'm thinking what you said, Stefanski said, and then Freddie would be like, oh yeah, I shouldn't run that play, and then the next week he'd run it and be like, oh darn it, I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean that. I said I wasn't going to do that. Yeah, I told somebody. Take that out yeah. of the playbook. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, I. I love our head coach. I really think yeah, we got I'm a good one. It. And yep. man, am I, this is my daily uh, reminder to you all that thank God we don't have Mike McCarthy. Oh my oh. God. Dumpster <laughs> fire in and, Dallas. You know, we'll get into that in a second, but they just got blown out by a Cardinals team that I think is kind of like in the same level as the Browns, where they're, they're better than bad, but they're not great. And, so, and they the, just what sucks so McCarthy them. can ride that injury excuse yeah. this yes. whole season. Yes. But then so McCarthy it, came out after the game and said, I thought this was the best week of preparation we had. <laughs> Freddie oh Kitchens my all oh over. My God. But yeah, McCarthy, one, if Jerry Jones isn't going to the bank and you know writing a check for Dak Prescott after watching, Andy Dalton's not your answer. Here's so the, uh, I'd pay the guy. They might not. It, That's it, the crazy thing is they might not. They're well, that kind they're, of organization. A, they probably yeah, and everybody Dallas fans. You see them everywhere. Cowboys fans are. I mean, you guys haven't won a division. You're like just as long as the Browns haven't won the division. No, uh, they, and they haven't won since the early nineties. Yeah, they're they're not they're not, and they're super loaded every year. And you yep. can't say that about Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, McCarthy, he just man, they're it's hard to watch, and they're super loaded on offense, and yep. doesn't help. Doesn't help that Zeke had popcorn or something on the sideline. The guy can't hold on to the ball, butter and fingers. he literally. And the reporter was like, "Zeke Elliott, you know, met with him about his fumbling." <laughs> that and, was awesome. And she's like, "He said, you know, it's gotten in his head, and these guys are really good in the NFL. They're just going after the ball, and you know, it comes in spurts. But I don't feel like I'm going to fumble the rest of the year." And it came out and fumbled three times, <laughs> yeah. I think, right in yeah. one game. There's two break like back to back. I was playing somebody in fantasy, took the lead, texted him and said, "Hey." See in the playoffs, and then literally they fumbled the ball, and I went down, and I was like, "Oh man!" And then he fumbled it again. They, no, like I had two yeah. guys going, and I ended up I won by like sixteen, I, seventeen I got, points, but uh, I lost. Uh, yeah, I with mean, the fumbles last year, and he I and lost. he does it. And it's not like this was the only game. I mean, no. he fumbled against the Browns. I think he's fumbled almost every week this yeah. year. Quick tangent: last year I lost a fantasy game by point zero nine points. Because Shady McCoy fumbled, got ne- I <laughs> took got the benched. I took the lead. He fumbled. I went down by point oh nine, and then he got benched and didn't go back in. <laughs> yep. So I know it all happens. too well your yeah, guys' pain with that. Do Do we want to? Because we spent the first thirty minutes on bullet one on Baker Mayfield. Yeah, that's yeah. just yeah. we'll gloss over this real quick. <laughs> so I will say, um, as far as the line was concerned, they didn't play well. Obviously, at no. all they they were bad. And I don't even want to blame Chris Hubbard because I didn't notice him getting it was mauled, the edge. But I just feel like you we missed Wyatt Teller. I He's feel like heartbeat. he gives us an attitude. He gives us an edge. He's kind of like the glue that holds it together, which is something that I feel crazy saying considering we didn't know he, if he was even going to be the starting guard. He was going to be the weakest link on our, on yeah. our line. Uh, and and I, I feel like he was – I feel like he really missed him. Our edge got killed, and as you guys know, I put a lot of that on our quarterback. But they all, it's really hard to block – defensive end rushers in the NFL to begin with. And then when you give elite guys like TJ Watt and Bud, it's like they knew the snap count better than we did. Yeah. I so agree. we, we, we didn't do anything to help our tackles there. Um, but man, we missed, I hope Wyatt Teller's back because yeah, we, I, we just, we just missed his attitude. We missed everything that he brings. And, um, and like, I didn't want to bash Chris Hubbard. I didn't notice him sucking. It just, as a unit, I feel it's like Wyatt Teller, is kind of like the glue that keeps that thing going. Well, so we and they're, they're used to, you know, working with each other too. Yeah. Hubbard, you know, and credit Chris Hubbard, he came in and our line played every single play together. We didn't have to bring anybody in, but he doesn't have that 
you know, the gel that the other five have of working together and being able to Conklin says one word and t- Teller knows what to do. And Hubbard's like, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, th- and those miscommunications um, on the line, I think hurt. But one of the biggest guys that for me that I felt that I really noticed that I missed him was Nick Chubb oh, in this yes. game. Yep, absolutely. And Kareem Hunt is fantastic. And yep. I'm not saying that I want I don't want Kareem Hunt because I do. Um, but there's a reason why Nick Chubb was the lead back. Nick Chubb's just different. Yeah, yeah yep. well, I found myself so many times, and you know it was hard running the ball because they were hitting you, you know, a yard into the backfield. So credit Hunt for what he was kind of able to do. But there was a lot of times where I just felt. Like, Nick Chubb breaks that tackle. Nick Chubb, you know, if we run that play for Chubb, it, we're getting a five-yard gain, not a one-yard gain. Uh, those type of plays just really stuck out in this game. I didn't notice them as much because I thought Hunt did all right in the Colts game. Not great, but he did all right. Uh, Dearness Johnson hasn't been uh, what not enough uh, to all, be man. successful. <laughs> Here's not the thing. All. He had a great game against the Cowboys. Really bad team. Everybody has. Kenyon Drake looked like a Pro Bowl. Yeah, week. if you got a running back and they're playing the Cowboys, you get that guy in the starting lineup yep. because so high on your Kenyon Drakes. Kenyon yeah. Drake. Kenyon Drake has been awful for me this year. Put up a thirty spot and a big loss for me this week. And that'll be the only thirty <laughs> spot he'll put up all year. Yeah. Yep. He won't score thirty the next three weeks. So yeah, I just missed. I missed Nick Chubb. So hurry I, back. I don't know if we talked about it right before we got on too. Is how nice it was to have him just come in and beat up a team for oh, well, two, three quarters. And then, hey, Hunt, not only are you going to just catch a couple balls here and there, catch a screen pass, but, hey, now you get in there and pound away a little bit. Well, here, and Be here's, fresh. Here's, the big, here's one of the biggest numbers is, that, you know, I look at the snap count, I look at all this stuff, of Kareem Hunt played 30 out of 57 snaps. Well, okay, so that left 27 snaps unanswered for at the running back position. Nick Chubb plays those thirty, and you got Cream Hunt for a chunk of those other twenty-seven. Yep. yep. But right now you're got to play. You're playing a Hilliard or you're playing a Johnson. It's a big and difference. You, you didn't play your fullback because he played seven snaps. The guy we brought in to help the run game, you know, well, an extra blocker to have in situations on play action. You played him seven snaps. You also got to look at the snap counts for the running game a little differently in this one because we were. Right, we the were situation. Forced out of the right, running yeah. game early. Quickly. Right, I agree. Uh, a couple other things that I saw that I, I, David and Joku in the news again saying that he wants Mary Kay Cabot. Yeah, get him out. Trade says, him. I want traded. He said I never out. said that. Cam Hayward actually, she came out and said a quote that you know I really that Cam Hayward said that you know he wanted to inflict pain and hurt Baker because they knew he was hurt. And Cam Hayward came out and said, "Hey, this lady's nuts or whatnot." <laughs> oh. I really didn't say that. <laughs> Here's the thing, oh. Mary Kay Cabot. <laughs> Is she's awful? Yeah, she's a she's she a, she's is, a pot stirrer. She so is. <laughs> you're a she's pot the, she's the girl liner. version. Oh, of <laughs> Sometimes you got to be. She no. that's my stepbrother. <laughs> I, Cleveland media, man. I think yeah. Mary Kay Cabot. I heard her asking questions post game. I was like, man, this lady is an, an idiot. You yeah. know, Tony Grossi. Oh. oh boy! He, I mean, it, it's all, Mary Kay Cabot's awful. We like, gotta how get do some we press get, passes? Yeah, how do we get her job? <laughs> yeah, because uh, you have to go to probably journalism school. <laughs> but with, that probably, with I, joke, with, I can't make torque converters by night. <laughs> so right. talking about our tight ends, and I kind of mentioned this when Njoku was coming back that I didn't want to see him take a bunch of time away from Harrison Bryant, and he played two more snaps than he did this week. Mm-hmm. And Harrison Bryant's here, you know. One, he's a reliable catcher. We said that this guy's super talented from day one. We liked his pass catching ability, and he will sell out and run block for you. And I felt like we missed that a little bit this week where you could tell like some of those guys stood out. Hooper didn't do a bad job you know, catching Hooper's the ball, good. but, man, isn't Hooper a tight end? Did he not get hit like he was a little kid getting hit out there by <laughs> some of the I thought every we all time. I forgot about that. <laughs> every did. time, uh, like Bud Dupree would come from behind him and just lay the wood. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I was like, man, who, I thought this was a big guy. Not at all. They were, he didn't look like it. No, I thought that. I thought they looked way more physical than us. We looked soft. Ev- everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They were just coming out and 
It looked like we were like, okay, this game's done. Get us out of here. And they smelled blood in the water. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is fun. We get to hurt people. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to lay the yeah, wood on this. I forgot guys. about and Hooper getting every creamed. It, it was oh, just like man. every time I'm like, oh, Hooper caught the ball. And it was like he took one step and was just blasted by a bus. <laughs> yeah, running through the middle of the field just on a you know three yard stream pass. And, 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 he as, got up as, much as, and as much as we're kind of going at Baker, and all of us, I think, feel like Baker didn't play well. That guy took a lot of hits and he got up every time without being a hundred percent. We in most a lot of quarterbacks don't take the beating that he took on Sunday and gets back up and says, no. I want to go out there for that next drive. No, because he could have he could have backed out and been like, Hey coach, I'm hurt. Yeah, it's it's a little tender. I just he got hit. Put his finger up his shirt and look, it's my rib. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I credit that, but it, man, it did they hit hard. I've got I st- I've got so much respect for Baker. I love him, love the guy, love the player. I mean, he's a he's a tough guy. But, like, I'll go with you on this, Blake. I got to see him getting better. He's got to be progressing. Now, I get it. Bad games happen. We talked about Aaron Rodgers had a terrible game. He looked pedestrian. It happens. Even his good games, though, I feel like we go into every game where, like, man, I hope Baker doesn't throw a pick today. I shouldn't have to. Oh, I hope Baker Baker makes those throws today. Even his good games this year are are pedestrian. Our our comments should not be, um, oh, he's – what am I going to say? Thank Shouldn't God be he like, didn't throw a pick. Yeah, so like for Aaron Rodgers saying, oh, wow, he's off this game. For Baker, we're saying, oh, wow, he's on this game. Exactly. Yeah. That's the way, that's yeah, not no. how it should be. So I think that this article that I kind of, that I really liked about the recap of this game um, had kind of hit this, hit how I feel about this game. So it says the concern justified, the angst understandable, the panic premature. Absolutely. Because I still think that, you know, there's a lot of season left. I think Baker could show us we might have a totally different tune, you know, in the upcoming games because I still think that he can be successful, um, well, but he's got to be healthy. The schedule will help him be. Yes. If you look at the schedule, we're going to see some and nice I, games and I'm, and I'm not saying if Baker is successful that he's still the quarterback moving forward. If we can sign Dak Prescott, sign Dak Prescott. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Baker. Go uh, sell and sh- car insurance yeah, with Flo Johnny or something. <laughs> with Johnny, you guys can um, work together. Oh, geez. So, but I, I, I definitely thought that this game going into it, it was a great test for our offensive line and the Steelers' defensive line won 10 out of 10 yep. times. Um, some uh, positives, though, to take away. Mac Wilson played a little bit more, played 31 snaps. Ogan Joby was back. Um, he, you know, he was on the field, played – decent i mean normally he's our run stopper so we did give up a lot of yards but he played 85 percent of the snaps after being out a week so that was at least a plus no i'm gonna say is we didn't force any turnovers this week but i thought coming into this game is gonna have to be um a shootout if we wanted to win because i didn't know if we were gonna be able to stop them the way we give especially with ronnie harrison and carl joseph out the way we give up big pass plays down the middle of the field and i know we gave up 38 points but a so much of that was giving them short fields when we started going, going for forward it. on fourth down. So I thought the defense played super yeah. solid. We didn't a couple, force a couple pass plays here or there, but against a team like with a Hall of Fame quarterback and all those weapons, you have to expect they're going to get there occasionally. And I thought it, it as a whole, I thought the defense played pretty solid. I think you can build off that defensive performance. I, I agree to an extent. The only thing I and Miles Garrett had a sack, but I kind of thought I thought he would have had a bigger game. And, but they credit the Steelers for they like taking him away, him. right? The, even on his sack, he got triple teamed, and still got. I mean, it, at some point, you love Miles Garrett. Now you were wanting no, to get rid of him. No, no, trust trade, trade him for Russell Wilson. <laughs> well, <laughs> trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't look that crazy. For They're that not right doing now. that trade, bro. I promise you. <laughs> They're good. So, do you think the Browns would do it, or do you think the Seahawks wouldn't do it? Oh, the Seahawks are definitely not. Tells doing me it. that my trade idea wasn't that crazy. <laughs> um, but no, somebody on the defense. We can't. The guy gets triple teamed. Right. No. And I. And, I, <laughs> yeah. and I'm. I'm not. I'm not taking that away from Miles. He still got a sack in the game. It was kind of like almost a pity sack. Ben trying to. <laughs> he like just wrapped his arms yeah. around and Ben just kind of fell. Yeah, it did look pretty like. Hey, like weak. don't hit me with your yeah. helmet. I'll go down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw what you did to Mason. Yeah. yeah. Which it was nice. We had, you know, Miles Garrett and Tomlin were probably told before the game, hey, go shake hands at the 50 yard line to make this like all smooth over because <laughs> yeah. they made sure to show that on camera. Um, but defensively, I thought, you know, we didn't play terrible. There were some really, there were some blown coverages. Uh, play that sticks out in my head is it was kind of early on in the game. 
James Conner running through the hole. Sendejo meets him in the hole, dives, and just totally just whiffs in the backfield. And James Conner runs for like a 15-yard gain. Um, so Sendejo showed up uh, the same way he showed up every other game. So I'm just I'm h- hoping that we get some of our safeties back because – Going to preview this game here in a few minutes. Bengals, they throw the ball a lot. They threw it 61 60, times yep. against us the first time around. Joe Burrow, uh, his, him and T. Higgins are kind of gelling the two rookies together. A.J. Green looked had like he was back. Yeah, he had an all right um, game. So yep. tough tough game coming up um, here in week six. Seven. Eight, seven, 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 week seven. <laughs> We're all over the place. We're seven weeks in. <laughs> COVID's of COVID. slowing down, so yeah. that's helping. Co- well, not if you listen to something. We talking about but this. In the NFL, where we live is going to be Red County here, real quick. I, I, I live in a Red County, so. Every- <laughs> What's up, guys? So is Blake. <laughs> yeah, they're, and Whatever. schools are all Whatever. changing their tune now to the whole coronavirus thing, too. But. Yeah. They're all Whatever. going to be shut down in a couple of weeks. Anyway, so Bengals. Yes. Uh, all right, so let's move into those Bengals. Uh, the first thing. I want to see the defense played better than they did the first game. Yep. I want to see, um, you know, we saw the Ravens make Joe Burrow look awful. I want to see us do that to him. Uh, it's time to do that to somebody. Uh, do it, please do it to. I'm, I'm tired of watching rookies tear us up. Some, you know, I feel like that always happened to the Browns. Well, they, uh, the rookie has their their best game of the season against us. Um, Miles Garrett, somebody other than Miles, get some pressure so they can't triple team Miles Garrett, please. Yes. Um, let's get a couple sacks. Let's well, force a couple more turnovers. I say Joe. Joe's saying, "What about the rest of our defensive front here?" Oh, I, I saw your. I saw your answer there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Olivia. Vernon's so who washed else? Up so who else are we putting in there? Who who's on that defensive front that we can count? Well, uh, who that was Porter the Gustin. Porter guy? Gustin. Yeah, we we raved about him. Like, man, this yeah, guy looked really good. Been? And Down haven't yeah. Sheldon Kurt. Richardson. First couple weeks, these guys were Adrian really Claiborne. Well. I feel like I haven't seen him on the field a whole lot. No, he led the team in sacks <laughs> the first two weeks, and I haven't. We had so we had three sacks against them the first time. Uh, they played from behind. They ran thirty more plays than we did. Yep. Um, I remember second half we hardly had the ball. Yeah, in that game, uh, Burrow, you know, he threw sixty-one passes, completed thirty-seven. Um, biggest tell in this game, I think, is how do our how do we adjust our now we got film. Okay, so we we're gonna game plan from what happened the first time. They had four guys averaging 10 yards a catch in that first game. Uh, and you're not going to do that against many teams and win. You know what? That's a good point that they or that we have film because so do they. Yes. So this will be a good test between Taylor and Stefanski yeah, because, I mean, it was not a blowout that first game. I mean, yeah, we kind of had the upper hand, and we, you know, for the most part. It but never felt in question. It still no. came down yeah. to the end where Too it was f- like, yeah, because something the goes wrong. Yeah. 215 yards rushing that game for the Browns. I mean, we put up big numbers on the ground. Yep. Uh, Baker threw for 219, 16 of 23. You know, good game for Baker. Um, and that, and that, <laughs> what do you expect from him, Blake? I mean, what do you, <laughs> he are wants you want five three? Whenever, you want, yards. You want whenever we're running Mahomes? the ball like that, I mean, even Mahomes is having these 200 yard games right now because yeah. he doesn't have to right. go for 400. Now, Dak was thrown for 400 because he had to. Right. You know, uh, so. we, we had three sacks against him the first time. I think we could get the five uh, mm-hmm. with our front. I think that we can as long as the other guys show up. That's, and, and how I, we did it early in the game against the Steelers. Redwine got to the quarterback, and then somebody else cleaned him up. I'm not sure who it was because Redwine <laughs> couldn't tackle Big Ben. So thankfully, somebody else was there. I thought Redwine um, played a good game, though. By the way, he missed some. Co- he was involved in some of the missed coverages on plays, but so was all of our secondary. I mean, Ter- <laughs> Terrence Chase, Mitchell. Chase Claypool was hard to guard. Okay, and yeah. what about that James Washington touchdown? Ja- Terrence Mitchell wide just open. Wide, yeah, completely. I mean, just a coverage. little little double move, and it was like. Yep. Yeah, All Big right. Ben. Big Ben yeah. did his little Brett Favre little pump fake impression and just threw it through. I mean, it was that was an easy touchdown. You don't get many more easier touchdowns than that one. Um, so corners got to play a little better. Um, Denzel Ward, I really love you, but when we're getting killed and you do do a pass deflection and knock it down, don't celebrate like we just won the Super Bowl because <laughs> uh, he does it every time where he's sticking his hands up in the air and then. You got burned on that James Washington touchdown. So, uh, yeah, I want to. I think if the secondary can cover, we can get a, a ton of sacks because their offensive line's terrible. Yeah, well, and but I we, want to see some different blitzes. Like, I feel like we rely on who's who do how many linebackers do we have that have a sack this year? Yeah, but so here's the thing: especially if you struggle in pass coverage, you can't blitz, right? Because well, it takes people out of pass coverage and. 
I get the, that. The good defenses can get pressure with four. That way you can drop seven into pass mm-hmm. coverage. Our, 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 but we got we can't let Burrow get rid of the ball in under two seconds every time. We got to cover somebody for at least three seconds, give these guys time up front to get some pressure because their offensive line's trash. Hopefully yeah. we're a lot healthier too. And they're we were decent. super beat up going in, like it as far as secondary. I'm well, and it was a short week when yep. we played them that first time. We had turned around, and played them on Thursday night. Um, so I I really think that the Browns are going to come out and look. I'm excited. I think that they're going to play well, but I'm excited because this is like I know we lost week one, but it was like kind of oh week one. We didn't have the system, you know, Raven. first time playing we together. A, an okay team in the Ravens. Okay, you know. so we had that type of feel. And then week two, we we're like, man, okay, this oh. is finally Stefanski's turn. Now we're a couple games in. We'll see how he bounces back against a team that you've already played before. How well can you game plan against their defense? Because you're going to know what they're going to try to do. Uh, if they say, if you try to stop the run, there needs to be an adjustment. I said, uh, is it a stretch to call this a must win? No. 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 I don't think that it's a stretch because it's a game. Now, I think that this is a game that we should win. Absolutely. And we're winning the games That's that we should win the thing. If this you, year. If you lose this game off the back of that shellacking in Pittsburgh, there's going to be t- the conf- so much The confidence talk. in those players all of a sudden Goes drops. And I mean significantly because this is, this is the perfect bounce back. It's like the NFL said, all right, yeah, you have to play the Steelers. We'll let you play the Bengals after that. Right. So, and I think – and. I agree with that, that this is a bounce, kind of a bounce back feel game. But a lot of people, the Bengals aren't as bad as what their record says well, that they actually they were are. Their defense, is, their defense is really bad. Their defense is really, really bad. And their bad. O-line is very, very suspect. But their weapons but, and offense yeah. and what they do, they were up 21 nothing, right? Is that what you're That's against what the Colts? scares me is if they – They if got we, the ability to score quick. If they jump out on us, then all of a sudden – our running game, the, our identity gets taken away, and then it's like, uh, and can Baker come back? Because here's the thing: Colts were down twenty-one nothing in the very pedestrian who we just ripped, Philip Rivers. <laughs> Colts fans are Le- just yeah, <laughs> led them it. led them back. If Philip Rivers can do it to the Bengals, we better be able to do it to the Bengals. Hey, if you want to crown them, crown them, man. <laughs> crown them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's yeah. all I'm saying. If 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 yeah, if Philip Rivers Phillip, is still who we think he is. Yeah, yeah. if old Philip Rivers can do that, if they somehow come out and take away our run game, Baker better throw for 300 yards you're, against these guys. You're hearing good things, though, coming out of Cleveland going into today. You're hearing, Baker, I'm really pissed off about what happened on Sunday. I'm not happy about it. None of the guys in the locker room are happy about it. We're not. We're going into this week. We're fired up. Those are the games where you, you see Baker come out and he's – Got a chip. Yeah, when and I hate that chip. I love that, that thing that you said. That. But what I what I send you guys though that that uh, yeah. that picture. Um, you grab it. I'll, I basically I see them and Baker's going to be a lot more healthy. This says the the Baker Mayfield cycle. Oh, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll PG censor this bit. a little bit. Play like crap. <laughs> it says we are here. And then it goes to criticize by the media. Underdog mentality. Beat inferior opponent. Call out doubters back to play like crap <laughs> yeah and on and on and we I, go i said i feel like i mean that that's it's kind it's of a, the way it hey, is i'm okay so if that means going into this week we're and we're playing it, okay. in my opinion we're playing an inferior opponent in, absolutely and in, yeah. for one time in my life the browns have a lot of inferior opponents on their schedule yeah nfl did us a favor this year and i think that the browns are good enough to take advantage of that and we just can't have a collapse no, and this is the perfect game to. I mean, this is kind of like that the pivot game, right? It's it's all kind of hinging. If we come out and establish that no, 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 we're still a good team, rest of the season looks good. Mm-hmm. If we come out and oh, get yeah. beat by the Bengals, and say it's like a two score game that we get beat, yeah, you you're start. supposed to, you're supposed to win at home. Those team, okay teams, good teams win at home. I think Cincinnati literally. They're transitioning into being a very, very decent team for a lot of years. Oh, yeah. They got the pieces oh, yeah. in They're, place to be – I mean, they got a good running back. Yeah. They got to get a better offensive line. They're kind Absolutely. of where, you know, in we places the ago. Brown defense yeah. really bad, had to fix the offensive line. Well, yep. we've kind of fixed the offensive line, but our defense still isn't very – they're getting there, but they're not great. Um, I agree. I, I, I look at this game – I. I hope that it's not high scoring. I don't want it to be high scoring. I don't want it to kind of be one sided because I think that. I see the, the to me the Browns should score for thirty again this week. Yeah, back to where we were. Yep. 
I, can, I, I can't disagree. That their defense is really bad. Mm-hmm. I just Terrible. hope that we, you know, it'd be nice to have a couple touchdown win here or there and not like, hey, we got up really big and yeah. it's here two minutes we go ago, again. And it's sweat time. Yeah, let's stomp. Well, let's, and this let's beat these guys by 17. Don't take your foot off the gas. On this offense, yeah, we scored 70 against yeah. Dallas. What this were we doing? Yeah, this would be the good way to tell, too, like, what is how does Stefanski bring his team back after a loss? Because we yep. know how we know how Freddie handled it. More crap the next week. Yeah. So Trick if they come, he, yeah, get they come, a T-shirt made. Yeah, movies. exactly. Yeah. They come out this week and they look good again, and they're back to where they were, and the confidence is there. And then it's like, okay, these guys are playing for Stefanski. He's getting them up for the the games. And I I I mean I could be wrong. Just from outside looking in, I think those guys buy into what he's doing. I think so too. I mean, I I think that. The outside media obviously always is going to try to make a situation out of all the guys that you have. You have big time personalities on that team. We joke around about it with Beckham. That guy looks at the camera weird, and we're like, "Ah, oh, you know, is right. there a trade coming?" You know. Yeah. So I think you know people try to stir things up, but I genuinely think if those think guys didn't I care, there you wouldn't see the you wouldn't see guys getting bent out of shape. You wouldn't see guys getting hyped up. No, they're upset. winners. Yeah. They like yeah. to win. Yeah. Well, and I and Browns fans. Um, we kind of fall in a custom of this because this is what we've been dealt with for the past two decades of yeah. losing football, you know, finally get a little bit of hope and then you kind of panic. Like, yeah, it feels panic. almost, it almost feels like some Browns fans, I think, we're 0 and 6. Yeah. Like, hey, we're still 4 and 2. This is still one of the best starts we've yeah. had in how long? Don't panic yet. You oh, know, yeah. schedule is easy. It's favorable towards us. Dude. But how many times has it not been where it was mm-hmm. like playing playoff team after playoff team? So mm-hmm. we got a little luck on our side with the schedule we got this year. Um, but you still got to go out there and win the games you're supposed yep. to win. win. Win those games because at worst, I'm seeing the Browns sitting at 5-3 and three at the bye. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, I mean, a that, be, it, it, with a good chance of be six and two, yeah, yep, and yep. get Nick Chubb back. You, you kidding me? If you would have told me when Nick Chubb got hurt that hey, Nick Chubb's going to get hurt, he's going to be out a few weeks. He's probably going to come back maybe right after the bye. And you're we'll going to be, you're going to be six and two. I'd, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sign me like, up, baby. I don't care. I don't care if we got beat a hundred to nothing. If you told me we were going to be six and two with Nick Chubb coming back, yep, and with the easiest part of our schedule. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I, I, I completely agree. I, like I said, I still see the the Browns, to me, still hit 10 wins this year probably. Yeah. As long as this is a pivotal game to me. Just like you said, do we do we bounce back or do we crumble? You know, in years past, we crumble. So I, I want to see... I want to see the best coaching performance from Stefanski, how he gets these guys ready. I want to see Baker bounce back. Hopefully he can lift his arm up. I want to see, I want to see everything bounce back this game. And I want to beat these guys by two scores. This needs to be a punch in the mouth. Yep. The Bengals should be nervous. The Bengals should be like, oh, man. Browns just got beat up. We're in trouble. Yeah. These yeah. guys are coming up. Yeah. So. Need to get a couple of the turnovers back that we gave away this week. Yep. Yep. Nice. Well, I guess if you think about it, think about New England all these years. Do you want to play New England after they just got beat? No, never. No, they they come out and pummel you. Yeah, that, that's that's what I want to see out of us. So, yeah. hopefully that happens. Um, that was a quick Bengals preview. Uh, let's roll into our game picks. Uh, or an hour in, so let's make this kind of quick. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah, well, we had a lot to talk about. Yeah, going into this it's week, it's actually but more civil than I thought it was. We going got to the be, we got like, the bad stuff out of the yeah. way uh, off camera. If you read some of the text messages between me and Mike, you would think that this was they weren't be friends the, anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be the R-rated version of the show today. Uh, uh, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. So okay. So we'll go into just recap uh, week six. Um, yours truly took the win this week at ten and five, so making up some ground. You know, things Who's are crazy. Yours truly? If Zach won the week, things are were not. Things good. are turning yeah. around. Yeah. Things are turning around. Uh, Justin actually went nine and six, just one game behind me, actually second place. And then Blake and Josh, first time that we had at least one person. We had two. You guys wanted to share it. Go under five hundred, seven and eight, and picks. And now this did include the uh, game from last week. We included in these picks uh bills and chiefs yes yep. um so we uh now move into week seven so overall records going into this week josh is sitting still in first place oh. 68 and 23 still in first place blake second place five games back 63 and 28 uh justin and myself are now tied for last place last place <laughs> at 62 and 29 a game out only six games back only one game out of gotta have a good week here yeah so yeah. big week coming up uh week seven so we will start off with a 
great uh, Super Bowl <laughs> matchup type game uh, with a giant. Well, I guess it couldn't be in the Super Bowl. What Giants at Philly. NFC Championship? Yeah. yeah. Danny Dimes at Carson Wentz, which Carson Wentz. I don't know if anybody watched the end of that Baltimore I did. game. He was. He's a baller. He, he was he's putting them on the back. Yeah. And then I, I mean, all the momentum in the world, and then they ran a read option that they couldn't. It was so awful. It was so bad. It was so Uh, bad. I could not understand. I was like, "Where's the Philly special or something?" (laughs) Yeah, it's up in Chicago. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So I'll start us off here. Um, I'm going to take Philly in this game because I think their defense is good enough to win this game for. I'm going to go Philly also. Yep. I'm all in on Carson Danny Wentz. Danny Dimes no. over there. Hey, you're I, talking about yeah, this. Is one of those no. games where and no, no. You Miles said you never pick a New York team. Ah, you're right. I did but, say, but nah. you also said you never pick Philly. So <laughs> yeah. are you, you just not picking something. anybody and Nobody giving us from the, the NFC East ever? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you just giving nice. us this one? And uh, we'll no, just... you know what? Give me the Giants. I, I said I was going to do it. Oh, I just threw up in my mouth. I, yikes! <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're going to have to shut the camera off. All right. So we got next game: Pittsburgh at Tennessee. It's a good game. Oh man, Derrick Henry. We'll see how good that D yeah. line is this week because Derrick Henry it takes more than just one guy to get to him. No kidding. I mean, the guy is a beast. You yeah. guys go ahead and give me the Steelers. They uh, they roll six zero. I'm gonna go Titans. Just Tannehill's the difference. Tannehill's the difference. Tannehill's the difference. <laughs> we didn't get into it, but yeah, absolutely, we Tannehill. did not. Yeah. No, we did not. We'll let it. We'll let Tannehill be. Yeah. Who you got, Justin? I'm taking uh, Titans. I'm going to go Pittsburgh as well, mm-hmm. even though it's at Tennessee. I Pittsburgh's offense is very good, and they didn't have to show it this week, but Chase Claypool is a monster. Yep. He's, he's a big, super big yeah, kid. He's super good. Uh, okay, so we'll skip over Cleveland, and since he will go to Buffalo at the Jets. <laughs> Buffalo. I need <laughs> a big game really out of Josh good. Allen. Bills. Yeah, Flacco uh, bounce went back for a one, 176. Hopefully they get Darnold back. I'm going with the Bills. Yeah, bounce back game. What, uh, what kind of dirt does Gaze have on somebody? That he keeps well, that I, job? He's that. I, agree. I think you brought it up there like, hey, we really want to lose this season, and Adam Gase is going to do that for us. Because <laughs> if we give the job to Greg Williams, he's going to do what he did in Cleveland. They're going to somehow win some games because yeah. he's going to blitz 11 guys on a couple plays and get some turnovers. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw it, too. Um, I can't remember exactly the wide receiver it was. They said, hey, if I'm Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> I'm going back to play. Oh, oh, it was yeah. uh, Roddy White. Roddy yeah. White, yeah. Yes. Roddy White from yeah. Atl- old Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. Said, I'm cool. I'm, I'm going, I'm going back boy, to Clemson uh, and probably going to win Ray another Finney, national Ray Finney championship. posted it, but I was like, oh, boy, yeah. What a tough life. Right. There were some people. Now, I I agree in a sense, but also if you can go to New York and you are talented, like you'll blow up yeah. because it's New York. Um, Broadway Joe. Yeah. So, okay, we'll move uh, on to Carolina at New Orleans. Give Drew me Brees coming off the bye. I'll, I'm taking Saints on that. I'm going to go Saints also. Yep, Saints. If if CMC was coming back, which they're saying he's probably not, I might have thought about taking yeah. I mean, Carolina. Why, why would he come back? I got Moster hurt. I got CMC <laughs> hurt. <laughs> Mark well, Ingram's doing Mike real well. Yeah, well. I mean, why, why would he come back? <laughs> <laughs> so because of that, I'm going to take New Orleans because I think Michael Thomas will be back this week as mm-hmm. long as he doesn't get any more fights with his teammates. Uh, takes us to Detroit at Atlanta. That's a that's fun a, game. That's probably uh, going to be a little bit high-scoring game yeah. uh, for you fantasy owners out there like myself. DeAndre Swift finally came through, and Thank I had you. to play him this yeah. week. So oh, I'm really, good for you. Yeah. I had Chris Carson on a bye, had to play Swift, and wow. it worked out. Good for you. Uh, uh, who you got, Justin? I'm taking Falcons. Yeah, dude, as long as uh, Julio's out there, yeah. Julio's Matt back, Ryan and is he's okay. He's back to close to 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Him and... Him and Calvin Ridley are wide receiver ones. Yeah, playing on the same team. Yep. But if Julio's out, different yeah. story. He different didn't practice story. today, but um, dude, he's playing. He's, yeah. yeah, he'll be. So there. Josh, who you, who you, t- you take? I'll take. Atlanta? I'll take Falcons. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'm gonna go the Falcons. Also, I'm gonna go different. I'm gonna go Detroit. I picked them to win this week, and I mean they worked out for me. The Falcons they got defense a good offense. is. I mean, they might as well not even put anybody. This on is defense. gonna be a high scoring game. I yes. think. I think yeah. it's a high scoring game and. It'll be a fun game to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so takes us into Andy Dalton and the Cowboys <laughs> at Washington football team. Oh, There's man. so many. Uh, the Washington wow. football team did come out and say, 
We're probably going to keep the Washington football team as our name next year. I yeah. saw that. I guess it depends. Man, really? If well, the Cow- all the names are bought by that one guy. So. WFT for life. <laughs> if, if the Cowboys have another great week of preparation, maybe they'll be able to pull out this win. Yeah, McCarthy, you think they're going to get the win here? <sighs> they're almost. Is it crazy that we're thinking that you put these teams on paper and it's not even close? No, Washington's, no. Washington's awful. But you're literally thinking no, but about you know maybe what? having to take them. I'm going to take Washington in this all one. Right. Uh. Dallas's defense, I, that's another one. That's another thing. Don't I'm, even put them on the field. Don't even do it. Just give the other team yep. seven or three alternated. Seven, I three, thought it would seven, help, three. too, with, uh, uh, what's his name, Van Der Esch back. I was like, oh, maybe there'll be something, some kind of consistency to their defense. No. no. And they tried to sell it as that, too, like yeah. early in the game. And, He's back. He's and Kyler Murray threw, had nine completed passes, and they scored 38 points. Yep. Yeah, give me Washington. Antonio Gibson's going to have a big game because everybody has a big game against them. I'm taking Cowboys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, this is I'm not really up. sold on Washington either. Like that's why no. I said the NFC East. How do you pick these no. teams? Nobody wants to win there. I am going to go Dallas as well. I think that Zeke has his best game of the year. Even though Washington's got a good front, I think Zeke's here in about all the Some fumbles, fumbles. Well, all the issues. Yeah. Dallas is two and four, and they're leading the division. Yeah, <laughs> we're four and two, is, and we're this third is for place. The, probably yeah. like the division lead right now. <laughs> and my boy yeah. Blake's texting me, telling me we got to go get Matt Ryan. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to uh, Packers after a beatdown uh, in Tampa mm. against Houston and Romeo Cornell. What were you doing going for two when you kicked the field goal? You're up eight. Listen, he, he like just, Romeo, I get it. I get if you if you score the touchdown, you're like, okay, we're going to go for two to go up eight. Do you know, make them have to do everything right to beat us. Well, hey, they had to do everything right to force overtime and. Yep. I was uh, so stoked. I was watching the game. I'm like, I'm the only guy that took Houston. I'm like, yeah. this is a hot. And we're, I'm, we're doing it. Houston played great. And then here comes Eric Henry just bulldozing everybody. But I will take Green Bay. Bounce back game. I'm going to take the Packers also. Oh, yeah, the Packers. They're not going to look like garbage two weeks in a row. I'm taking Houston. At I'm home, going Houston like. at home. At home, they. I mean, they're putting up huge numbers. You on finally offense. have a good week, Zach, and you're hey, gonna throw it we'll all see. away. We'll see. We'll see. He's gonna be uh, we'll sending you text messages to, <laughs> yeah. straight to Mexico. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll find out. Okay, Seattle at Arizona. Mm. Seahawks. Seahawks off a bye. Uh yeah, I'm taking Seattle. Oh, you kind of hesitated there. I think I'm going to have to go with uh, Seattle on this one. I'm not going to stray away from. Couldn't the argue on with that the bye one. week, right? That uh, Russell Wilson. I can't argue with Russell Wilson yeah. as long as he's playing. He's I'm rolling. pretty much taking him. They're real close to uh, signing Antonio Brown. Also, I hear. I saw that they're yeah. interested in him. They're looking at him. Mm. Uh, which Blake was giving Justin some slack for having him on his fantasy team. Still, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll okay, so we got Jacksonville and Minshew against Herbert in the Chargers at L.A. Give me the Chargers. Yeah, Herbert and the Chargers come out. I think they win this one kind of big, actually. Yeah, because Gardner's who I said he was. Blake. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't done much since the first couple weeks. No, I'm going argue. Chargers. Yeah. Justin? Chargers. Chargers. Okay, clean sweep there. Um, Kansas City uh, at Denver. Denver coming off a win against the Patriots at home against Kansas City. Give me the Chiefs. Just throwing it. I'm taking the Chiefs as well, but just throwing out there, this is another one of those games that Denver normally plays the Chiefs and Mahomes well. It's just one of those division games. Almost anybody the Chiefs play in that division, they play well. If it's the Chargers, yep. it's always a close game. Raiders. If it's Denver, if it's the Raiders, it's just something about it. Yeah, yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, absolutely Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got to break up this trend here. Uh Interesting game. San Fran, Jimmy G, against his old team, New England. No Mostert, looking like it's McKinnon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Hasty, I think, is the one. And Jeff Wilson Jr. Su- supposed to be back. Three-headed monster in the backfield, which we've seen before. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, McKinnon's just, yeah, he'll run for 100 and something. And Not Debo, against the Patriots, though. Debo mm-hmm. Samuel is really good. Yes. And... Ayuk, the other guy, he's, he's also pretty talented good. as a well. rookie. Yep. Uh, so, Josh, who you got? What? Make you putting you on the spot. Uh, give me Bill on a bounce back. Give me not Bill. Give me San Fran. I'm gonna take a Patriots. I don't see him losing two. And this is this is a tough one here. And um, also, the game they just played, they hadn't practiced in like two weeks. Cam hadn't practiced in a while. Give me give me the Patriots. I just feel like the reason Tom Brady wanted to leave was the Patriots. 
didn't have a whole lot of weapons that they surrounded him with. So what did they do this year? They brought the same roster in <laughs> with just Cam Newton. Uh, so I'm going to go with San Fran as well. I'm going to go San Fran. Uh, so we this moves us into Sunday night football. Tom Brady and the Bucks taking on the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday night. Raiders had a bye this week, correct, I think? Yes, yeah, they're they coming a bye. off a bye. So they're coming yeah. off a bye and coming off a Huge win, win. A big against win, yeah. Kansas City. So they're living high out there, rolling slots in Las Vegas. I'm going to go with the Buccaneers. I think their defense is really good, and I think, you know, they're figuring some things out on offense. I'm I'm thinking this roller coaster with the Buccaneers season is going to keep going, so I think the Raiders pull this one out. Mm. Justin? I'm going Buccaneers. I'm going Raiders as well. I like Chucky. Raiders. I do love John Gruden. <laughs> yep. John Gruden's awesome. Uh, so we'll see if anybody's knocking on wood with me and Josh on that pick. Uh, Chicago at the Rams on Monday night. Good defense versus pretty good offense. Not much offense coming from Chicago. They're just doing enough. To, their defense puts them in short fields. They're doing enough to score, turn some of those into points, and then defense holds everybody under 20 points. Their defense is real good. Yeah, Cleo Mack is still super, super talented. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. Cra- I'm gonna go with the Bears because I think the defense, the defense is just that good. Justin, I keep picking against Chicago, and I will continue to. <laughs> I will probably continue to take losses on that, but I will go LA. I'm actually gonna go the Rams here because I think this is one where Aaron Donald makes it on prime time. I swear he's always front and center. I agree. So good. The Rams in prime time, their offense too just clicks and they put up numbers so i'm gonna Except go for that super bowl they were in yeah. yeah i'm gonna go with the rams as well so blake you're the only one taking nick Foles. i'm not taking nick Foles. i'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking khalil <laughs> mack <laughs> uh so that's all of our picks except we will circle back around cleveland at cincinnati who we got i'm not picking first this week because it didn't work out last week go ahead josh you want to start it yeah, I did. I haven't really thought of a score, but I'll take Cleveland. I think we do got to score thirty. I think we do score thirty. So I think we're probably. I'll go thirty-six to twenty-three. Some weird numbers in there. Yep, I like that. Blake Browns thirty-eight twenty-one. Justin Browns thirty-five twenty-one. Some high-scoring games from the Browns here. Um, I'm taking the Browns as well, and I think I think we kind of have our way a little bit to them, and I think that we finally look decent on defense. I'll go. We win thirty to sixteen. Only gonna okay. give up. I think our defense plays well with having film on Burrow. It's like it's one of those first games where teams have film on Burrow. They get to the, they finally see, you know what what he's capable of, and they can make adjustments. Um, so that wraps up all the picks for week seven. Tune in to see if I make up any more ground or if I fall further behind. <laughs> I'll have to uh, I'll have to text you guys my picks or something next week. Yeah. So yeah, yeah Blake will not be with us next yeah. week. So tune in to for Wait, the. So you can uh, you can't Zoom call in here from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from, uh, yeah, yeah. How, what's Kiva? How's Kiva feel about you Zoom calling in on your guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we're gonna see. We'll see, guys. Uh, tune in next week. See how dedicated Blake really is to the fans. That yes, watch as us. your host <laughs> of the dogs. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what he was doing, thinking about planning a wedding during the football season when hey, we were on a podcast. I don't think he did any of the planning for the wedding. <laughs> if it was anything like my wedding, I they asked me, "Hey, what do you feel about these napkins?" And uh, I said, "Do whatever the hell you want." So we. So I've had this discussion with Kiva, and she says that a lot of the stuff. With the wedding, you know, Blake, it was Blake wanted the big wedding. Oh, oh, well, considering nice. that uh, Blake texted us one time and said, I made it here, dear. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we don't, for, we don't forget about that. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I hope you don't I hope, I hope you have a. Uh, hey, Zach watches This Is Us. Give me a break. Hey. <laughs> hey, oh, hey wow. Now he's, now he's trying to throw shots at me. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Let me just say real quick. What we are watching, well, I don't know about you guys getting ready for the wedding, but I'll be watching the Buckeyes Saturday. Yes. Finally back in action. Go get them. Yeah. Nebraska, Very knock exciting. them off. Let's let's see what Justin Fields looks like. I will be at a wedding on Saturday. I will, just a sneak preview, if you're at that wedding, I'm coming out with the Cleveland Browns dog pound flag with <laughs> yeah. my wife. So, nice. But congratulations, Blake. Big time. Very, very, something I never thought I would say to you personally. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be involved with it, man. Very, congratulations to both of you guys. Well, thanks. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. So thanks for tuning in to another live episode of The Dogs. Uh, as you guys heard, I'll be absent next week, so you have to listen into these scrubs uh, <laughs> when they break down the Bengals game and preview our matchup with the Raiders. Uh, remember to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Please go subscribe on YouTube. Uh, hopefully next time I see you guys, I'll be nice and tan, still married, and the Browns will be 5-2. and two. So uh, have a good week, everybody. Yeah.